Hey everybody, this is Greg from the Code Creative. In this video, we're going to talk all about the package-lock.json file. If you've done any work in the past with Node or NPM, I'm sure you've seen this package-lock.json file in your file directory. And you may have thought to yourself, what is this package-lock.json file? Is this really necessary, and what is it doing for my project? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out in this video. Now, without giving away too many of the juicy bits of this video, I will say right away that package-lock.json is a very important file to have in your project. If you're going to be working with a team of developers, for example, the package-lock.json file is the file that's going to help these other developers run the project successfully on their systems. So let's get going. By the way, if you're new here to the channel, we've got new videos coming all the time. So make sure you subscribe so you can take your coding skills to a higher and higher level every week. So let's get going here with this first example. I'm here in VS Code, my code editor. And as you can see, I have a directory set up called Code1. Now the first thing I can do in my terminal to get going with the project is I can run npm init. And if I run it with the dash y flag, that's going to act like a shortcut to avoid going through a lot of the questions that are asked. So I'll go ahead and run npm init dash y. And now you can see we have this package.json file generated. So let's go ahead and open up package.json. And here you can see, of course, we don't have any dependencies yet because we haven't installed anything. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to come back into the terminal. And for this example, I'm just going to install the really popular package express. So I'll do npm install express. And now notice a couple things. Here in package.json, we now see dependencies and we see express. And we also see a node modules folder as well as the package-lock.json file. So notice that once we installed Express, our package-lock.json file got auto-generated, and our node modules folder got created as well, with all the dependencies. And if you're wondering why there are so many dependencies here in the node modules folder, remember that even though we just installed Express, which you can see here, Express has its own dependencies, its own child dependencies. And that's what all these other folders are. So let's move forward now, and we'll close the node modules folder. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at the package-lock.json file back to back with the package.json file. The main thing I want you to notice here is that in the package.json file, we just have the express package listed as a dependency. However, if we look at package-lock.json, here in our dependencies, take a look at all the dependencies that are listed. There's many, many, many of them. And if I keep scrolling down a little bit, here I see Express. That's the package that we actually explicitly installed. And as we saw when we looked in the Node Modules folder, we saw that Express itself had many of its own child dependencies. And you can see those listed here in the Requires section. So you can see we have a package called Accepts, Array Flatten, Body Parser, and so on and so forth. See, there's many of them. And if I look throughout this package lock.json file, I can see those packages. I see, here's Accepts, here's Array Flatten, there's body parser, and all the rest of them. So why does this package-lock.json file list so many more dependencies than the package.json file? Well, in a nutshell, package-lock.json serves as a snapshot of the entire dependency tree for our project, along with the specific versions that are used. So notice that along with the specific version of Express, which here is listed as 4.17.2, if we look at the other dependencies, we can see their versions. So accepts uses version 1.3.7, array flatten uses 1.1.1, and so on. So because we have these specific versions for everything in our dependency tree, this package lock.json file, which is typically checked into source control, is going to ensure that any other developers that might clone our project are going to install the same packages that we use successfully. So a question you might be asking yourself at this point is, if we have Express listed here with a specific version in our package.json file, why would another developer who comes along and clones our project and runs npm install end up with a different version of Express and different dependency versions? Well, to understand that, we need to talk a little bit about semantic versioning. So if you recall from earlier when we installed Express, we simply ran npm install Express. We didn't specify a particular version. So what npm did was, it went out and it got the latest version of Express for us, which currently is 4.17.2. However, you'll notice at the beginning of these numbers, we have this caret symbol. 
And this caret symbol is part of a system known as semantic versioning, or SEMVER for short. So what this caret symbol says, or signifies, is that if at a later point a developer comes and runs npm install using this package.json file, if there have been any minor updates or bug fixes to this package, this caret symbol is saying that it's OK to update to those versions. So this last number here, the 2, signifies patch changes. These are going to be things like bug fixes or documentation changes and so on. The 17 represents minor changes. These are going to be some things like maybe new functions or additions to the API. Regardless, making minor changes or patch changes should be backwards compatible. That is, they shouldn't be breaking changes. So theoretically, if these numbers get incremented, like if we go to version 4.18.3 for example, well, our code should still work. As long as this first number doesn't change. This number represents a major change. That is a breaking change or a significant change to the API. With all that being said, even though minor changes or patch changes should be backwards compatible, there is the possibility that these changes can introduce new bugs. And so a developer might come along, run npm install, and get some slightly different version of this package that actually causes problems for the project. And that's what the package lock.json file solves. It actually specifies the specific versions of each dependency when the package.json file is created or updated. And by the way, we never manually alter this package lock.json file. Rather, it's auto generated and updated based on the package.json file. So, this entire first example was basically to demonstrate the differences between package lock.json and package.json. Now that we have a better understanding of how these files operate, let's try a second example. And for this example, we'll do some experimenting. Let's start out by installing an older version of Express. So in my terminal, I'm going to run npm install express add 4.0.0. And if you check out the package.json file, you'll see that the express dependency has updated to 4.0.0 with the caret symbol. Now, since I explicitly installed 4.0.0, if we go looking in our package lock.json file for the express dependency, we can see that it lists version 4.0.0. Now the next thing I want to do for this experiment is I want to actually delete the node modules folder, and I want to delete the package lock.json file. So let's say that another developer comes along and has this package.json file, and now wants to run npm install in their system. So let's come in the terminal, and let's run npm install. Now if you look in our package.json file, for the express dependency, nothing has changed. We still see the caret 4.0.0. However, let's open up our package lock.json file. And let's go and find that express dependency. And notice what you see. The specific version of express that got installed was actually 4.17.2. And now that we know about semantic versioning, we should understand why this is. This caret symbol allowed for 4.17.2 to get installed. Right, we're still in the same major version, version 4, but we allowed for the installation of the latest minor update, as well as the latest patch update. The bottom line though is that, since we didn't have our package lock.json file at the time we ran npm install, we now have version 4.17.2 of Express installed on our system, whereas the original author of the code had 4.0.0 installed. So now let's try a third example. Here let's go ahead and let's once again explicitly install express at 4.0.0. And if we look in package lock.json for express, we can see that it's been updated to version 4.0.0. So this time what we're going to do, instead of deleting both the node modules folder and the package lock.json file, we're just going to delete the node modules folder and we're going to keep the package lock.json file. So now, with package lock.json present, if a developer clones our code and runs npm install, like so, notice that our package lock.json file still has version 4.0.0, and if we go into the node modules folder, and we go into express, and we look at its package.json file, we go towards the bottom of it, we can see that it's at version 4.0.0. So in this case, with package lock.json present, npm install didn't get us 4.17.2, but got us the same version to reflect what we had in package lock.json. I also want to show you something interesting about how package.json and package lock.json sync with one another. 
let's go ahead and let's install a specific version of Express. So in the terminal, let's say npm install Express at 4.16.0. And we run that. And here in package.json, we see Express at 4.16.0. And if we look in package.lock.json, we see Express is at version 4.16.0. Now, for the sake of the experiment, let's say that I came into package.json and I actually manually changed this version of Express to 4.0.0. And remember, it has the caret symbol. And once again, this is saying that minor updates and patch updates are allowed. Now, since our package.lock.json file is set to Express version 4.16.0, what's going to happen if we run npm install once again is that our package.lock.json file is going to stay at 4.16.0. Because in this case, NPM saw that Express was allowing for any minor or patch updates to version 4. And it looked at package lock.json and said, yeah, that's allowed. So that's the version we're going to use. However, what if we change the major version in package.json? Instead of 4.0.0, let's go to 3.0.0. So what's going to happen is NPM is going to look at this package lock.json and see that Express is at a version not allowed by the semantic versioning indicated here in package.json. So as we're going to see in a second, package.lock.json is actually going to get overridden. So in the terminal, once again, let's run npm install. And now let's look in the package.lock.json file for Express. And here we can see that Express is at version 3.21.2, which is a version that was allowed by the semantic versioning of our Express dependency in package.json. So in cases where package.lock.json has a version of a dependency that's allowed by the semantic versioning in package.json, well, that version from the package.lock.json is the one that's going to get used. However, if that version in package.lock.json isn't allowed by the semantic versioning from the package.json, well, then package.lock.json is going to get overridden. Now, in the description section and the comment section down below, I'm going to put a link to my free Google Search Tips for Developers cheat sheet, which I want you to download. And it's completely free, and it's going to teach you some ways to do better Google searches when you're searching for things like algorithms and syntax and so on. If you enjoyed this video, if you feel like you got some value out of it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you can get more content just like this on a weekly basis. See you next time.